Greetings, fine friends. Andy Johnson here. We are looking at how humans learn the brain and the mind. This will be a series of six short video lectures to give you an overview of this teaching and learning thing. First of all, there's a difference between brain and mind. Brain is the physical organ. That gray blob of jelly that's all crinkled and sits atop of your cranium. Mind is the psychological phenomenon that the brain creates. It is consciousness, what we are aware of. An analogy is brain is to film projector as mind is to picture on the screen. The brain is the organ. Think about that. Here is something that we have learned. I say we. What do I have? Ants in my pocket? From <laughs> neuroscience or studies in brain imaging. We rely on knowledge up here for the vast majority of perception, for teaching and learning as well. As a matter of fact, there is input data that we receive from the world. It comes in, relayed to the thalamus, right into the middle of the brain, and goes up to the cortex, right here on the upper edge. However, most people think it's all one way. There is almost ten times more information coming from the cortex down to the thalamus than up. That means we use the knowledge up here to help us perceive and understand reality. Okay? We're looking at human learning. What is it? From a cognitive perspective, and there's many definitions of learning, it's a change in the cognitive structures that occur as a result of experience. The file folders in your head get thicker or different structure. Something changes up here. Learning occurs here. That's why some of us, at least me, ants in the pocket again, do not like behavioral objectives because learning, real learning, occurs up here. I prefer purpose statements. Remember I talked about how important knowledge in your head is? Those who know more can learn more because you use this knowledge not only to see but to help you organize and understand. The knowledge is used to understand new information. You sort it and you put it in the storage locker where it belongs. I can read quite a bit about Ed Sight, can read pretty quickly and understand because there's a lot of knowledge in here related to that. Topics like financial planning, no knowledge, whew, I read and I don't understand. Those who know more can learn more. Learning is not a passive activity. You cannot be learned. You cannot be learned at. It's something you have to do. You have to interact with the new knowledge. You have to say, does it make sense? And in your head, you have to make connections to something new. As you take in new knowledge, you must look for those connections. Do I understand? Rote learning is in when you take in information, just like here, and it's not connected to anything. It's like memorizing a list of ed psych terms. If you do not understand them, what good is it? They're not connected to anything. Meaningful learning is when you take in new information and it's connected to information in your head that you already know. The more you know, the easier it is to understand. Learning's an active process. It also involves metacognition, thinking about thinking. As you read, as you take in new information, you ask, do I understand? That's metacognition, thinking about thinking. Now here is the thing, this is not just some drugged up thing, but we create our own reality. Yeah, man. The brain does not replicate what's out there. Instead, we use what's in the brain. We use minimal amounts of information to fill in the blanks. The brain looks for patterns and takes in these patterns, and we each create our own interpretation of learning. I'll talk more about that in the next lecture. Here's another very interesting thing about learning. Learning changes the physical structure of the brain. Those are neurons, and as we learn new things, they become connected in different ways. You form new neural pathways, and new neural networks are created, are made greater. So as you are acting upon the world, the world is acting upon you. 
as you are learning, you are changing the physical structure of your brain. Hopefully you're learning something new right now. We know new brain structures change the way we perceive. We perceive each of us the world differently because our brain is structured differently. We have different amounts of knowledge. So you see how these two interact in a very interesting way. Part two, we will be looking at the information processing model.